Beehive Golden Corn Syrup presents the first professional Beehive Giant Slalom being held at Georgian Peaks, located on the southern shores of Georgian Bay, between the towns of Collingwood and Thornbury in the province of Ontario, Canada. This is the first race ever scheduled where the greatest names of the skiing world will compete for more than $4,000 in cash prizes. The race will be held on Georgian Peak's famous Thunder Run, three quarters of a mile long and a 770 foot vertical drop. Entered to compete in the Beehive Giant Slalom are such world famous names as Austria's Tony Spies, Andro Motorer, Christian Pravda, Norway's Stein Eriksson and Sigurd Rockney, Canada's Ernie McCullough, and a host of other top names from the United States and Canada. This is truly the first time that the great names in the world of skiing will compete for cash prizes. Excitement is running feverishly high among the competitors and the 10,000 spectators who have turned out to witness this great event. The forerunner is on the course. Andy Tommy of Ottawa and former Canadian Olympic and FIS skier and holder of a number of Canadian championships. Andy has spent three days on the mountain planning and experimenting with this course. He finally settled for only 28 gates in the three-quarter mile run. A smooth, fast type of course, looking deceptively easy, featuring a great deal of rhythmic skiing. But woe to the competitor who gets slightly off the required line because he will be in trouble. Now, that heart-stopping moment. The first runner leaps out of the starting gate, Tony Spies of Austria. In 1952, Spies won a bronze medal in the Olympic giant slalom. And in 1957 and 58, was appointed Austrian national ski coach. Now in the traverse, Spies's line seems to be low. This may affect his time. In this top international competition, one error in judgment can lose the race. Everybody waits for the first official time. It's 55 and 8 tenths seconds. And now Christian Pravda, one of the greatest Austrian racers and dominant figures in ski racing in the last 10 years. In the 1952 Olympics, Pravda won a silver medal in giant slalom and a bronze in the downhill. In 1959, he was winner of the national giant slalom at Squaw Valley. Pravda holds permanent possession of the prestigious Harriman Cup, winning it three times in 1953, 56, and 59. He skis so effortlessly that he appears to be having a slow run. He took the traverse high, and he was able to tuck into a good racing crouch. His time, 55-2. Otmar Schneider, another top Austrian. Winner of a coveted gold medal for slalom in the 1952 Olympics and a silver medal for downhill. He was a member of the Austrian national ski team from 1948 to 1956 and was appointed coach of the 1960 Austrian Olympic team. His speed is deceptive. Notice, Schneider doesn't get into a real crouch while crossing the traverse. His time, 55.7. Just five-tenths of a second slower than Pravda. It's anybody's race. Andro Motor of Austria powers his way down the course. Motor is from Kitzbühel, the Blitz from Kitz. He's won many European competitions. In 1953, he was winner of the International Giant Slalom at Stowe, and in 1955, the Harriman Cup. In 1956, Motor won an Olympic silver medal in Giant Slalom and a bronze medal in Downhill. This looks like a fast run. Fifty-five zero. 
the best time recorded so far, beating Pravda by two tenths of a second. And now the breathtaking Stein Eriksson of Norway, winner of a gold medal in the 1952 Olympics in giant slalom and a silver in slalom. He won another gold for the combined. Normally a great stylist, Stein seems to be sacrificing style for speed. Let's wait and see. Erickson's time, 53 and 8 tenths seconds. He beats Motorer by 1 and 2 tenths seconds for the fastest time in the first run. And now Ernie McCullough of Canada, the emotional favorite, coming out of seven years of retirement and competition. He's down. In this top international field, that will be the end of McCullough's hopes for a victory. The long months of training wasted. Always a tenacious competitor, he's still out to make a good showing. In 1956, the press voted McCullough skier of the half century. He has won every major skiing competition in the United States and Canada. A living legend in Canadian skiing. Here is Ernie McCullough's disastrous fall in slow motion. It appears that he caught an uphill edge the veteran McCullough was trying too hard. In spite of his spill, his time is a remarkable 59 and 6 tenths. Art Tommy, Canadian Olympian from Ottawa, skiing on an ankle, injured in practice. Tommy, a powerful skier, seems to be having trouble with his timing. He hooks the flag and is down. The ski patrol to the rescue. Now, Sigurd Rockney on the course. A young Norwegian comparatively unknown in North America. A protege of Stein Eriksson. Rockney has won the Norwegian championships three times. He is a stylist in the Ericsson tradition. A dark horse today, he holds his line well through the flags. The rough terrain has him fighting as he goes through the traverse. The best time so far in the first run, Ericsson of Norway with 53 and 8 tenths, followed by Motor of Austria, 55 even, and Christian Pravda, 55 and 2 tenths. Rockney's time puts him in sixth place in the first run. Franz Gobel, a silver medal winner for slalom in the 1948 Olympics. He learned his skiing in St. Anton in the Austrian Tyrol. Higher on the course, Gobble has missed a gate. This disqualifies him from the second run. Johnny Fripp, the great Canadian racer from Ottawa, former coach of Canadian FIS teams. His competitive record spans a quarter of a century. Twice winner of the Quebec Kandahar, and winner of the Alta Snow Cup. He is placed in a host of other Canadian championships. Hans Eder, a former member of the Austrian national team and now a resident of Toronto, Canada. Eder is one of the few recognized four event men in the world being at one time the top jumping and cross-country competitor from the Alpine countries. From Switzerland, Fritz Channon, 
former holder of the world ski flying record and coach of the Swiss national jumping team. He now directs the ski school at Chalet Cochon, St. Margaret's, Quebec. From the 1960 Canadian Olympic team, Jean Lessard, Province de Quebec. From Owen Sound, Ontario, former Canadian FIS team member, Jim Georges, a member of the famous Georges skiing family. Hans Wieland of Austria, head of the ski school here at Georgian Peaks. Bill Irwin from Fort William, Ontario, many times Western Canadian champion. He represented Canada at the 1948 Olympics. Now Red McConville from London, Ontario, holder of many provincial honors. Red is late on his turn. He's down. A very fast recovery. McConville was formerly a ski instructor at Mont Tremblant, Quebec. And he's putting on a sterling performance today. Bill Georges, another member of the famous Owen Sound skiing family, always a top contender. He is followed by Edward Popovich from Windsor, Ontario, who does most of his competitive skiing in the highlands of Michigan. Now in mid-course, Pierre Mayotte, Ski School Director at Limberlost Lodge, Huntsville, Ontario. Here's Paul Williams of Cadillac, Michigan, and holder of United States Midwest Championships. Don Holding of Toronto, Assistant Director of Georgian Peaks Ski School. And the last contender of the first run, Mario Fontana of Windsor, Ontario. The competitors preparing for the second run have been feverishly changing waxes. The snow conditions have changed radically in the midday sun. There goes Ericsson of Norway up for his second run in the Beehive Giant Slalom. He leads Motorer of Austria by one and two tenths seconds, followed by Pravda, Schneider and Spies, all of Austria. Then Rockney of Norway, then the two top Canadians, McCullough and Fripp. The first five runners' times are within two seconds of each other. The burning question, will Stein Erickson, with a convincing lead from the first run, play it safe? Or will he throw caution to the winds and go all out for the big purse? Now, so that you can see this historic ski race in minute detail, the second run will be shown in super slow motion. Beast is off. Making every movement count, he thrusts out of the starting gate. One of the all-time great Austrian racers, Spies is at his spectacular best in this second run. Watch how he, like all top competitors today, will step uphill as he comes through this gate.
Spies is now an instructor at Aspen, Colorado. Fifty-three and seven-tenths, shaving his first run by more than two seconds. World-renowned Christian Pravda poised in the starting gate. The slow-motion camera catches the smooth efficiency that has made him, at age 34, one of the most respected competitors in the world today. Pravda is now teaching skiing at the Sun Valley Ski School in Sun Valley, Idaho. Now, quickly into his crouch with his skis tracking straight and fast across the traverse. His time, 53-4, almost two seconds faster than his first run. Otmar Schneider, Austrian Olympic champion and coach, now racing instructor in the ski school at Mount Mansfield, Stowe, Vermont. Schneider was in fourth position at the end of the first run less than two seconds behind Erickson, who had the fastest time. One of the big benefits that professional ski racing will generate is in improved ski techniques. A top racer, in his attempt to shave tenths of seconds, improvises. When this proves to be successful, techniques and teaching methods change. One of the techniques now being adopted by many instructors is the step turn. All of the top competitors here are using the step turn. Watch how the weight is stepped over onto the outside ski a little sooner and the heel of the new inside ski is lifted. The tip remains on the snow with just enough pressure to keep it there. This maneuver puts the maximum weight on the outside ski when most needed and provides a fast, virtually skidless way of turning. Two point nine. All of the runners up till now have been almost two seconds faster than on their first run. And now, Andro Motorer, the blitz from Kitts, placing second in the first run. He will be going all out to make up that one and two tenth seconds difference between his time and Ericsson's in the first run. Motorer is now instructing in the Aspen Ski School, Aspen, Colorado. To show how keen the competition is today, the four Austrians placing immediately behind Ericsson are all within eight tenths of a second of each other. No margin for error in this top group of international competitors gathered here today at Georgian Peaks for the first professional Beehive Giant Slalom. Watch how the step turn results in a positive weight shift. The stepping motion is a natural and faster one and simplifies body movement.
3-4. Motor ties with Pravda on the second run. But he has the fastest combined time. Canada's great Ernie McCullough had a disastrous fall in his first run. But the same phenomenal competitive spirit that lifted McCullough to the top of the ski world now challenges him to shoot it all or nothing for the fastest single run of the day. He's down, but he's up again quickly. Ernie McCullough is the director of the famous Mont-Tremblant Ski School at Mont-Tremblant, Quebec, and chief examiner of the Canadian Ski Instructors Alliance. McCullough's return to competitive skiing after seven years of retirement pays off in the veterans class. And now, the winner of the first run, the incomparable Stein Erikson of Norway. Erikson has to go all out. He no longer has a safe margin because almost every competitor preceding him in the second run has bettered his first run time. It has been said that most champions skiing on a crowded hill are indistinguishable from the crowd, but not Stein. He stands out like a solid gold Cadillac. Erickson is a national hero in his homeland. He is now ski school director at both Aspen Highlands in Colorado and Boyne Mountain, Michigan. The crowd of over 10,000 lining the whole course is absolutely silent as the drama unfolds. Erickson is pouring it on all the way down the course with all the daring and confidence of a true champion. His judgment seems to have paid off also because his skis seem to be particularly fast. Erickson's time, 52.3, the fastest time of the day. The race is over. The officials are totaling the times, and the crowd gathers for the prize giving. On hand to congratulate the winners is Tony Seiler, winner of three gold medals in the 1956 Olympics and the FIS World Championships in 1959. And Miss Beehive, also Lauren Gray of the St. Lawrence Starch Company, sponsors of the Beehive Giant Slalom. The makers of Beehive Golden Corn Syrup sponsored this historic ski race because of its close association with athletes in all sports who use this great energy food. Ernie McCullough, who in spite of a bad fall, placed a remarkable seventh overall and first in the veterans class, receives a check for $600. Sigurd Rockney of Norway, who placed sixth Tony Spies, placing fifth, gets his reward.
Christian Pravda in a tie for third place with Otmar Schneider. Both received $500. Pravda and Schneider were just two tenths of a second slower than Andrew Motorer, who takes a well-earned second place and a purse of $800. And now, the champion, the winner of the first professional Beehive Giant Slalom and the $1,500 purse is Stein Erickson, the champion today against a field of great champions. His combined time was two and three tenths seconds faster than Motorer in second place. The meet here at Georgian Peaks has been a tremendous success, a giant step in the exciting and fast developing world of competitive skiing. <laughs>